Hi, it's Dwyer, September 21st, 2024. Let's talk about Daniel Dubois' victory over AJ. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, folks, believe it or not, the casinos had Daniel Dubois as a plus 300. He was a 3-1 to one underdog going into this fight. As I've said, anything north of a plus 150 is giving a fighter less than a 40% chance of winning the fight. Here, the casino was guessing, right? You saw that a big-time puncher only has to be right once. And in this fight, Dubois was right a number of times. Let's talk about the odd thing with this fight. It'll sound weird. But Anthony Joshua's best moment in the fight comes right before he gets stopped on a check right hook. Right, literally. He starts throwing long right hands. You see that he is hurt, not really hurt, but he's hit Daniel Dubois solidly. Dubois backs up, is near the ropes. This could have been perilous. AJ, of course, steps forward right into a Daniel Dubois check right hook. Let's talk about the knockdowns. Let's talk about other observations. Dubois is interesting because he's powerful in both hands. He throws both hands from different angles. So compare the last knockdown in the fight, right? It's a right hook right on the button on AJ's chin. Right, We talked about the fact that AJ is a bit defensively challenged. Look how open his chin is. Right, He lands a couple of big shots on Dubois. No doubt saw he had Dubois over by the ropes. Got reckless defensively. Now compare that knockdown with Dubois' first knockdown, which is a looping right hand. Right, He throws the punch. It comes in from high. Knocks Joshua down. Joshua seemed to have a problem with the different angles of Dubois punches. Let's talk about the second round. You notice that AJ is having a problem clinching Dubois. More importantly, you notice that Dubois is being downright disrespectful. Right? There's a moment where Dubois comes in and AJ is trying to clinch him. And Dubois puts his forearm right across the face of AJ. Right? Be aware of the hostility. Be aware of the moments in a fight where one fighter is letting the other fighter know, hey, this is going to be rough and tumble. Let me just say that in the third round, it's interesting. You have Dubois with this jab. Now, I thought coming in, personally, that AJ would have the better jab. Dubois, who's being aggressive, is actually outside, letting AJ's jab fall short. But Dubois himself has what turns out to be the best jab in the fight. So he hits, and keep in mind, his jab's a left-handed punch. He hits AJ with it. Then he jumps in the pocket. And he throws a beautiful left hand. Here's where you see why Dubois is a champion. Right? He has knocked down AJ already with his right hand in the first round. The second knockdown is the knockdown of the fight. It comes after a beautiful jab. Then with the same hand, he comes back and throws a picture-perfect left hook. Take a look at the knockdown in the third round. Let me just say, too, um, AJ, again, problem clinching in part, in part because his legs get tangled up. If you look at his legs after he gets hit and stunned and he goes backward, you'll notice it looks like he twists an ankle, right? I believe that's crucial. I think they missed it on the telecast. Because AJ, after that moment, never fully has his legs under it. Right? I believe AJ 
because he was hit. Right? I believe AJ had an ankle problem the rest of the fight. Let's talk about the fourth round. You know, I thought it was interesting because, of course, uh, Dubois lands another picture-perfect left hook. Folks, Dubois is very two-handed. In the fourth round, they also call a controversial slip. I encourage people to look at the film. I'm not sure if that was a slip in the fourth round. I think that's really more a situation of a fighter dealing with a bad ankle. Double check me on the film, right? But as I watched it, I thought, you know what? AJ is struggling to stand up, right? I thought AJ was off balance, didn't know what to do. You know, Dubois is so sudden jumping in. Dubois is so unexpected because you don't know if it's a right or a left. You don't know if it's a jab, which was bludgeoning AJ, right? So I just got the feeling that on a bad ankle, when Dubois jumps in, I think AJ is jumping back, doesn't have his balance. Right? I thought the slip was suspect. I, I thought that was a knockdown as well. We get to the fifth round, and I'm just telling you, it's a thing of beauty. One wonders how Dubois could be so high risk. Understand, AJ hits him with two right hands, and AJ's a big puncher. Dubois is over by the ropes. You would have thought he was Edgar Berlanga. Right? And in that moment, Rather than try to clinch AJ, rather than try to put his hands up and rope a dope, right? Because he's just been hit with some AJ right hands. Instead, Dubois has the presence of mind to throw the right hook right on AJ's chin. And of course, AJ's chin is unprotected. So understand what this has done. It's a major fight, folks. This is a signature fight that might age extremely well especially if this is the start of a Dubois reign, right? Let's just think about the possibilities here. A new generation is now in the building. The Wilder AJ era has now receded a bit. So you have a 27-year-old who's the heavyweight champion. He was coming into the ring, but this validates it. Right, Because, of course, unlike Ergovic, you're talking about AJ, who was the heavyweight champion, two different times. Dubois has just beaten AJ in AJ's house of Wembley. Right, Let's not kid ourselves. I know they're both from the UK. Really, it's AJ who owned that building. Right, So just think about the fights. You have the possibility of a rematch against Joe Joyce, right? A guy who beat Dubois. You have the possibility of a rematch against Usyk if Usyk wins the second fight against Tyson Fury. You have the possibility of a rematch with Philippe Ergovic, who landed a lot of right hands on Dubois earlier, right? Who looked better, quite frankly, against Dubois then, of course, did AJ, who hit the canvas several times, right? So this is an interesting swing. Yesterday, you had a fight take place in the United States. Richard Torres, right? Torres is actually, I believe, a little younger than Dubois, right? Folks, I think that fight would be a barn burner. Understand, some champions like to fight their top competition, before their competition is ready to fight, right? Mike McCallum, of course, fought the Hulk, Julian Jackson, in the 1980s, right? He wanted to fight Jackson before Jackson figured out the lay of the land, right? You want to fight Godzilla before Godzilla knows his way around downtown Tokyo. And, of course, you have other fights. Dubois is a Frank Warren fighter. You have Gili Zhang looking for a partner, Right? You have, of course, the last king of Scotland, Martin Bacoli. You have, of course, Michael Hunter, who beat Martin Bacoli. 
understand the heavyweight division has never been deeper. You have a big fight in the UK coming up involving Fabio Wardley against Fraser Clark. The winner of that fight would be an interesting person to put Daniel Dubois up against. Let me also say this too. You know, years ago, Oscar De La Hoya used to fight on Cinco de Mayo or the closest date to Cinco de Mayo, right? Depending on whether Cinco de Mayo landed on a holiday, right? Then, of course, Floyd Mayweather beat De La Hoya and started fighting himself on Cinco de Mayo. Now, of course, you have Canelo, who took over Cinco de Mayo. Canelo, of course, also fights on Mexican Independence Day. Right? Just understand, Wembley was AJ's house. A 27-year-old has just taken the keys to the front door. This is an opportunity if Dubois, who I'm sure made a mint, let's just say somebody made a mint off today's fight with this greater than 90,000 crowd. Right? If Dubois plays it right, he can make Wembley his home. But he's going to have to fight people with names, right? Understand, if Dubois gets half the crowd that they pull tonight, he would still be pulling more than 40,000 people. Let me say, too, that he doesn't have to leave the UK. I know America is a big market. We get it, right? I know they're paying big money for fights in Riyadh. I get it, right? Right now, the centerpiece of the heavyweight division is the United Kingdom. Right, folks? You don't get situations like what you just had at Wembley anywhere else. Right? You have a young guy who is a dynamic puncher, absolutely lethal with both hands, and at 27, it looks like he's still learning the sport. Right? Where did this jab come from? Why didn't we see this jab in the Joe Joyce fight? Right? Understand, too. I know Dubois has had off nights. Folks, when he's on, does it get better than this? Were you prepared in the first round for that huge right hand that he threw that knocked AJ down early the first time? Right, folks? He hits that hard. AJ's completely lucid. The moment before he gets hit with that punch. Understand, too. You know, in the uh, third round, uh, AJ puts both of his gloves on the canvas. That should have been called a knockdown. Of course, Dubois gets the knockdown anyway because Dubois stays in his face and AJ is badly hurt. In other words, Dubois hits that hard. Now, given the depth, of this heavyweight division. I believe if Dubois were to announce that he's fighting Joe Joyce again, or Philippe Ergovic again, or Usyk, and keep in mind, he might not want to, because Usyk's a tough out, and he might think to himself, you know what, I'm improving. Let me do what Canelo did to Golovkin, and wait a little bit before I fight that rematch. Right? Let me let me make sure that Usyk is a little bit older and that I'm more accustomed to being champion. Right? Because I'm telling you, folks, his jab today was special. Also, off the jab, it's unclear what he's gonna throw next. Right? You know, he, he knocks down AJ here with the left that he throws after the jab. Right? So Dubois. Folks, it's a new day in the heavyweight division. Let me just say, though, right? Be careful here. This is a deep division. It's an extremely deep division. And, you know, some of the guys out there are cagey, right? Martin Bacoli against Dubois. Folks, that's a difficult fight. I can't tell you what happens in that fight, right? You know, let's be real here too. Um, Joe Joyce gave away that Derek Chisora fight in the last few rounds. 
Joe Joyce, even though he got beat by Zhili Zhang, Joe Joyce is dangerous. If you start messing around with Zhili Zhang, right, with Usyk, you start fooling around with southpaws, keep in mind, Dubois looked lost against Usyk, a southpaw. Zhili Zhang, a southpaw slugger, could be tough on him, right? Just food for thought. Andy Ruiz, Dubois won this fight, and Dubois does do spacing extremely well. As I said, AJ's jab comes up short, but Dubois does spend a lot of time in the pocket. You really can't do that against Zhili Zhang and expect, uh, excuse me, against, um, well, you can't do it against Zhili Zhang, but you also can't do it against Andy Ruiz. Right? So if I'm Dubois, I find a way to get back in at Wembley. Right? I definitely try to make Wembley my home. But I also have to realize that I need to pick the right opponent and I need to be careful because the water right now in this era is extremely deep at heavyweight. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. If I'm AJ, right, I think things over, right? I'm not sure even if I have a rematch clause and I don't know if he does. I'm not sure if I want to fight Joshua, excuse me, want to fight Dubois again. Right? You know, certainly AJ's no longer in line to fight the winner of Fury against Usyk, unless Fury loses that match. Right? Just food for thought. If I'm Dubois, I also want to think carefully before agreeing to a fight against a Tyson Fury who is a great boxer. Right? Some of the things that went on here. I think wouldn't happen against Tyson Fury, right? Fury is better defensively than Joshua. Fury um, moves better than Anthony Joshua, right? Dubois uh, wouldn't be able to jump in the pocket and have the element of surprise that he had against Anthony Joshua. Those are my views. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Uh, let me just say, too, let's say he were to fight a Fabio Wardley, which would be a dangerous fight for him, right? Just understand, um, he got hit with some shots from Joshua. Just look at the sequence right before the shot that ends the fight. He got hit with some shots from Joshua. Anybody who gets hit with shots from Fabio Wardley might not be able to handle it, right? Wardley is more unstructured than a Anthony Joshua, and Wardley's also a puncher, right? As I've said here, just like Dubois was right tonight, Wardley could be right if the two guys matched up against each other. Let me close with this. Don't fall in love with weight classes. Right? The Bridgerweight champion, Lawrence Akoli, is from the UK. Right, folks? Akoli has an excellent jab. Now, for some reason, Joshua's jab wasn't landing tonight. Right? If Akoli studies the film, Akoli could establish a jab a little bit better than Joshua did tonight. Stick with it and could potentially give Daniel Dubois the kinds of problems that Dubois had in dealing with Joe Joyce's jab. So Dubois is the champion. He's in a room surrounded by a lot of talent, not just internationally, but domestically, right? He has a lot of options. I hope his next option puts him not in the United States, not in Riyadh, but back in Wembley. Today was magical, right? Fight someone special here. Even if you lose 30,000 fans, you'll still have 60. There'll still be a lot of money to go around. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.